Welcome to part 2 of my 4 part tutorial series on visualising proteins using Pymol. Part 2 will focus on the basics of Pymol, explaining how to create interesting images of proteins that are publication quality. If you do not know how to acquire a protein file, please see part 1. If you are already comfortable with Pymol and wish to create a video, skip ahead to part 3. Part 4 will explain how to export your protein for 3D printing. We first want to download an educational copy of Pymol. Go to pymol.org, then the Buy section, and select Educational Use Only. After filling in the form, you will receive an email containing a username and password to download the software. The educational version is sadly only version 1.3, not 1.7, so a couple of things you may find on the Pymol wiki may not work. We now want to open our .pdb file, in my case human deoxyhemoglobin. To manipulate the camera on our protein or object, we left click to change perspective or rotate, middle click to move the object, and right click and drag down or up to zoom in or out. There are two ways to input commands into Pymol. The first is via the command prompt at the top, the second is using the visual user interface at the top right, which is what we're going to start by using. Action allows us manipulation of the objects, show allows us to show different components, hide allows us to hide different components, and color allows us to color different components. L stands for label, but we won't be using this function. If you wish to label your image or protein, it is much better to do so using Paint or Photoshop. Go ahead and hide everything. We are now going to use the Show option to decide on the core of our protein. Lines is the most basic, showing only atoms and bonds, while Sticks is a slightly larger, more descriptive version. The ribbon option shows the alpha carbon trace, in other words, connecting the first carbon atoms attached to each functional group. This option can be good when you want to show the internal structure of a protein but reduce noise, say around an active site of an enzyme. The cartoon option is arguably the most powerful and most used representation, showing the secondary structures of the protein. Take a look around your protein using the mouse controls I talked about before, bearing in mind you are actually moving the camera, not the object. If you lose perspective of your protein, simply go to Action and Orient to reset the camera to the object. There are a number of different ways we can colour our protein, such as by elements or assigning different structures different colours. Here I colour the protein by spectrum rainbow, helping define the different subunits of the haemoglobin. You probably have a handle of the UI now, so let's try the command prompt. It uses the Python language for command entry, a fairly intuitive method which after a bit of practice becomes very simple. Try the command show surface to show the surface of your protein. To change the surface colour, use the command set surface colour followed by your colour selection then the target object. In this case the object selection was all, so we annotate with a star. You can find more colours on the Pymol wiki. Improve the quality of the surface by set surface quality 0 to 2. I recommend 1 unless you have a very powerful PC as there is little difference between 1 and 2, as shown on the screen. To allow us to see the protein beneath the structure, we need to make it transparent with the command set transparency 0 to 1. Try a variety of fractional parts till you find one that you like. Around 0 0.7 will allow us to see clearly through to the inner structures. If you are using cartoons, set cartoon fancy helices 1 will further define their edges. The display drop down and background will allow you to change the colour of the background on which your protein is displayed, which may make it easier to see. Let's add some more detail to our protein. Pressing the S button at the bottom right hand corner of the screen will open up the amino acid bar above our protein, allowing us to explore the residues within. 
The PDB entry for your protein might contain papers that explore important residues within the protein. For instance, in my protein, there are four heme groups responsible for carrying oxygen, which I am going to display. Select your residue via the bar, then copy to object from the action menu before renaming it. Show your residue as sticks to accentuate them. You can orient to the object and remove or add background noise using the middle mouse wheel. Colour the object according to your taste. I colour by element to emphasise the iron component in the centre of my heme. Make sure that your object will stand out against the rest of your protein. Continue defining and colouring residues until you have shown all that are important for the final image. You can see here that I have defined all four of the heme groups. The final step before rendering our image is to activate anti-aliasing using set anti-alias 0 to 2 to make sure that there aren't any jagged edges in our final image. We are now going to render an image of our protein using ray tracing. This is a powerful tool which allows users to make journal quality images. Set the camera as you wish and enter the command ray width comma height. In this case I want to produce a 720p image, so use ray 1200 comma 720. After ray tracing, the image can be saved by file save image as .png. If your ray trace crashed your pymol or took too long, firstly try zooming in a little to your object. If it still crashes, we will have to change the hash max. If your PC is low on RAM, try reducing the memory available through the command set hash max 50. Similarly, the available memory can be increased past the default 100 megabytes by entering SAT hash max 200, but will obviously require a more powerful PC. To add variety to your images, use the command set ray trace mode and then 0 to 3. One will have normal color with a black outline, and two will only have a black outline. Mode 3 will quantize the color and have a black outline. 3 will not work well unless you set the opaque background off with set ray opaque background off. We are now going to learn how to use the mutagenesis tool. This can be visualized strongly with an enzyme. By mutating at its active site we can change how large its substrate can be. I have selected cutanase, a cyanine esterase belonging to some plant pathogenic fungi for extracellular degradation. I have also included an inhibitor to allow us to easily find the active site. Firstly, make the inhibitor stand out by using a vibrant colour and hide the main chain of the protein as we're going to be mutating a side chain. Go to Wizard, Mutagenesis to open the mutation interface. Show the amino acids by pressing S at the bottom right hand of the screen. We want to mutate the large tyrosine to a smaller alanine. Select the tyrosine at the active site. At the right hand of the screen, select the amino acids you would like to mutate to before pressing apply and then done to close the menu. File and save the new molecule as a mutant before deleting the object. Open up the original enzyme and the mutant so we can compare them side by side. We want to see the physical effect of our mutation on the overall structure of the protein and its active site. To do this, we need to show the surface for both proteins using the Show Surface command before increasing the surface quality by using the Set Surface Quality command. By using sticks for the inhibitor instead of lines, we can more easily locate the active site. Click on either the mutant or cutanase object to hide the selected. By colouring them both in vibrant colours, we can easily assess the effect of our mutation. By showing the two surfaces together, 
the non-mutant will clip the mutant and we can see where a mutation has had an effect. As you can see, there is an increased indentation on the mutant enzyme, suggesting a larger active site. We can ray trace each object, allowing a side-by-side -side comparison. 